Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. So, I've got my pre-release kit in front of me. Contains six Forgotten Realms boosters, as well as a promo card, which we are free to play in the pre-release as well. And then probably one of the most exciting inclusions in this pre-release kit is an actual D20. So unlike the normal spin down dice we get in the pre-release kits, this is an actual D20. So the difference between a spin down and a D20, as I've learned recently, is that the numbers are more randomized. So if you see the 20 on the back side corresponds with a 1, the 19 corresponds with a 2. So normally on a spin down, the numbers are kind of adjacent to each other in numerical order. With a d20, it's more randomized. So that's the major difference there. So this is an actual factual d20. All right, so let's get this out of the way. And then let's take a look at what our promo rare is for uh, our sealed pack. We got a foil fighter class. So that's pretty cool. Might see some play in, uh, who knows, some equipment decks like Hammer Time in Historic. But uh, could also come in handy for our sealed deck. And ooh, we even got a foil set of tokens here, and that's pretty nifty. A foil goblin with Dungeon of the Mad Mage on the back. We've got a foil skeleton with Lost Mine of Fandalver on the back. These are all three dungeons that you can potentially venture into in the set. And Tomb of Annihilation with a foil Atropal. Yeah, that's a very cool addition in this uh, sealed pack. So everyone's got all three dungeons at the ready to venture into. That's awesome. And then it's time to open some packs. Alright, so are we ready? Booster number one. I'll be sorting these by color, that way it's easier to then build a deck afterwards. Alright, pack number one. Let's see if I don't get any glare. First card, Unexpected Windfall. Fine filler card, can maybe help us fix our mana with the treasures or a ramp into something big. We've got Price of Loyalty. An act of treason effect. There is a bit of a red black steel and sacrifice archetype, although I don't know if it's going to come together and sealed very often. Hired Hexblade, 2 mana 2 2, draws a card when we sack a treasure to play it. Not amazing, but sometimes you need some filler 2 drops. We've got the Hill Giant Herd Gorger, this card's quite good. As a curve topper, gains a bit of life. Synergy in the green white life gain decks. We've got a Devoted Paladin, 4-4 four, four that pumps a team when it enters the battlefield, fine 5 drop as well. Then you find the Villain's Lair, Counterspell or a Looting Effect. Counterspells probably go up in value a little bit in Sealed since people tend to play their bombs, so having an answer for the opponent's dragon might be nice. So could definitely make the deck. Got a Hobgoblin Captain. Pretty good 2-drop with the Pack Tactics mechanic. Valor Singer, also quite good. Dire Wolf Prowler, decent mana sink, and if you top deck it later, can attack for 4 damage right away. It's another fine green 3-drop. Zombie Ogre, 5 mana 3-5. Turned out to be a little bit better than expected just because it's not too difficult to trigger this turn after turn and then keep venturing in the dungeon. And a 3-5 lines up quite well against a lot of creatures in the format. A Ray of Frost as our first uncommon. Of course better against red decks, but still pretty good, or at least playable against most other decks as well. Got a Keen-Eared Sentry, 2-1. Prevents the opponent from going too crazy in their dungeons. Just a filler 2-drop. We've got a Bag of Holding, downshifted from rare to uncommon. 
and then our rare, the Black Staff of Waterdeep. Not an exciting rare, although, you know, we have a bag of holding to maybe synergize with it, so you never know. Might be able to make this work. And then a fancy swamp with a flavor text. You search for a stolen artifact has brought you to the edge of the Mare of Dead Men. All right. And a spider token with menace and reach. All righty. Pack number two. We've got another Atropol token, probably won't be needing the non-foil one. And then first card, Spare Dagger. Not the best of equipments, but has a bit of synergy with Death Touch creatures. You're ambushed on the road, also pretty low impact trick. Got a Soul Knife Spy, quite a good 3-drop with a few ways to make it unblockable in the set. Improvised Weaponry, 2 damage makes a treasure, can help us maybe fix for one of our bombs, which we have yet to open. Horde Robber, 2 mana, 1-3, makes a treasure when it hits. Also ended up being better than expected. Compelled Duel, have yet to cast this or see it being cast. Not a great card. Half Elf Monk, on the other hand, definitely delivered. Very annoying to face, which usually means it's a good card. Got the Ginny Windseer, one of the better blue commons. 3-3, three, three, lots of scry with flying. Underdark Basilisk, 1-2 Death Touch. A fine defensive creature and has a few synergies in the set like the Spare Dagger. First in common is a Power of Persuasion. Bound Spell. If you get lucky, you probably get a little bit unlucky with this one since sometimes putting the card on top is better than stealing it for a turn. Choose your weapon, a main deckable plummet effect that can also act as a pump spell. Always fine. Ooh, this one's exciting, Battle Cry Goblin. Not too difficult to enable pack tactics. And uh, there's also quite a few other goblins in the set, and this can be quite a payoff for it. Ooh, nice or rare. Walt's Spider Queen. Well, definitely one of the best rares in the set. So definitely a reason to play black in the sealed pool. So, yeah, that's a nice one. Ooh, what is this? A Baleful Beholder. <laughs> For a second it looked like the actual good Beholder. But yeah, pretty cool foil sketch art. And uh, still a playable card, 6 mana, 6, 5. Can make the opponent sacrifice an enchantment or give our creatures menace until end of turn. That foil's pretty cool. Alright, and then an island. I'll read you the flavor text. As your ship clears the edge of Water Deep Harbor, you notice pirate sails on the horizon. What has made them so bold? Who knows? So, probably want to play black. Second color, still undecided. All right, let's get this goblin token out of the way. Another spare dagger. Soul knife spy number two. Another improvised weaponry. Vampire spawn, three mana, two, three, that drains the opponent for two when it enters the battlefield. A fine filler card. Ranger's longbow. Reasonable equipment, even if it's kind of pricey to move around, plus two, plus one, and reach. Another ambushed on the road. Contact other plane, on the other hand, pretty decent. It's always nice to have a few card draw effects, especially in sealed, where the format tends to be a little slower. You've got more time to get your card advantage going. Manticore, also playable, especially nice with first strike. 
got a sketch art or I guess alternate art Null Hunter. This is a pretty good card in general. 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, gets a plus 1 counter with pack tactics. You hear something on watch. Also find removal spell if we end up in a more controlling deck. Or can be a pump spell too. First uncommon is a lurking roper. Great payoff for the life gain decks. And in the dungeons there's also a few ways to gain life to maybe untap it. And it's still a 4-5 for 3 mana that can play defense quite well. So definitely a good card. Got an Iron Golem with alternate art. 5-3 Vigilance has to attack or block each combat if able. Another fine card. We've got a Blue Dragon. Pretty exciting. 5-5 five, five Flyer. Shrinks the opponent's team down. And a rare. Ooh, Skeletal Swarming. Well, we might be going Black Green. Gives us access to Skeletal Swarming and Spider Queen. And we've opened some pretty good Black and Green cards in general. So quite happy with that one. And then a forest. As the sun reaches its zenith on the day of the solstice, a castle shimmers into view on the hilltop, just as the ancient text predicted. Alright, so we're up to pack number four. Get the skeleton out of the way. I guess we'll be needing those skeleton tokens if we play the swarming. First card, Boots of Speed. Fine equipment. Plummets, probably not going to be main decking plummets when we have the uh, more versatile uncommon. Got the Ranger, 4-1 with reach, that makes a 2-2 wolf also quite good. Planar Ally, good white common that lets you venture if it attacks, 3-3 three, three flyer. Although we're kind of hoping to just open more good black and green cards at this point. Bar the Gates, decent counterspell. Got the Brazen Dwarf in red for the dice rolling deck. Fates Reversal, can maybe get back one of our better creatures from the graveyard, sadly. Or better cards are enchantments and planeswalkers, which this doesn't get back, but still playable. Circle of the Moon Druid, good way to enable pack tactics as it attacks as a 4 2. Clattering Skeletons, another skeleton to synergize with the Skeletal Swarming. So, probably playing this one too. Assuming we end up blank green, of course. Rhyme Shield Frost Giants with a. Interesting alternate art, let's say. Feywild Trickster as our first uncommon. Pay off for the dice rolling deck. Moonblast Cleric can grab an enchantment. So if we somehow just splash for the Skeletal Swarming, this is potentially a way to grab it. So let's say we end up Black White's Splash Green. Then a cleric can help find the skeletal swarming as well. A wandering troubadour, also an excellent card. Pretty easy to venture with this a few times. And then a rare sphere of annihilation. Not an amazing card, but still probably playable. And uh, inner color if we end up black. All right. And our island reads, In crystal studded waters far below the surface, you've discovered an incubating egg of mysterious origin. Spooky. Pack number five. We've got a nice reminder card explaining all the archetypes in draft which is a very nice addition in these packs nowadays. Gives you an idea what the archetypes are all about. So if you didn't know already, then uh, now you know. All right, you see a guard approach. Not an exciting spell, but if you've got a very valuable creature to protect, you could consider it. Another contact other plane. 
Although it's gonna take some convincing not to go blank green at this point. Faraday's Fireball, good red card. One thing about sealed decks is you usually prefer your colors to be kind of unbalanced as opposed to each color having a few good cards because uh, then your deck's usually going to end up being quite a bit better. And Bull Strength if we need a combo trick. Veteran Dungeoneer, quite good too. You come to a river. Especially good with those Soul Knife Spies. Air Cult Elemental also pretty decent. 2-5 Flyer that bounces something. We've got Neverwinter Dryad, help us ramp into our bigger place. Maybe a way to trigger the Skeletal Swarming as a creature will have died. Another Clattering Skeletons. First uncommon is the Demogorgon's Clutches. Pretty good Mind Rot effect, which also typically better in Sealed than Draft. Got a Trickster's Talisman. And a Magic Missile. Also quite good in red. And a rare Dungeon Descent. This is a bit of a brick. One of the weaker rares in the set. And our Mountain Reeds. You meant to simply rest in Hundlestone, but the miners have told you stories of whispers in the dark below. Alright, last pack, let's hope for some goodies. Got another Atropol. Don't think we'll be needing three of those. Alrighty. Got a Steadfast Paladin, good to drop in white with lifelink. Kick in the door, have yet to see this cast. Dueling Rapier, fine equipment, kinda acts like a combo trick, especially good with first strike of course, or double strike. Another Horde Robber. Another Bull Strength. Another Dungeoneer. Shortcut Seeker, kind of expensive, but does have a lot of toughness. Valor Singer, number two. Got a bullet. 3-3 three, three, that grows if a creature dies. First uncommon is Hama Pashar for the blue-white venture deck. Purple Worm is a nice one. Can potentially cast it for 5 mana if a creature died, and then an 8-7 with ward 2. Cridal of Baldur's Gate for the blue-black rogue deck. Pretty cool alternate art. And our rare is a Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Don't think that's gonna make the cut. But probably has some constructed applications. And a shiny Monk of the Open Hand to go with the... Planeswalker as well. Alright, and our final swamp reads... You expected to meet hostile Drow in this ancient ruin, but they fled long ago. What darkness could have driven them out? Who knows? So, now that we opened all our packs, they're already sorted by color, so we don't have to worry about that. Don't think I'll be needing my fighter class, so we'll probably leave that one in its package. And uh, yeah, we'll kind of look at all the different colors and kind of assess our situation. I've noticed that we haven't opened a lot of removal, which is a little worrisome. I think we had like a fireball in red. And uh, yeah, that's kind of about it. Maybe that frost in blue. So can't really count on a removal to get there. Maybe the Spare Daggers plus Death Touch can get something done. We do have Cridal for maybe kind of a blue-black rogue unblockable deck, but we didn't pick up a Thief's Tools to go with it. So we'll have to see here. So yeah, going over all the white cards briefly. 
We've got two veteran dungeoneers at five mana, those are good, or at four mana. And those are quite good for venturing. We've got a paladin at two, the Moonblast Cleric, which as we mentioned can potentially grab or skeletal swarming. Um, not sure if we're gonna need the Monk of the Open Hand. And then at five mana, Planar Ally is also quite good. And I guess you hear something on watch can be a removal spell. So that's uh, quite decent. The Half Elf Monk also kind of like a removal spell. That can keep something tapped down. Then the two here ambushed on the road, probably not gonna make the cuts. Uh, Keen Eared Sentry if we really need a two drop. And then at five, the Devoted Paladin. So overall, white's not super deep, but the card quality is okay. Um, white doesn't have much removal to begin with, so it's mostly just power toughness and ways to venture, plus maybe a way to access or bomb in uh, Skeletal Swarming with the Moonblast Cleric. Then taking a look at blue. Blue's pretty deep just by card count. Let's see if it's actually any good. Hideous Laughter, unless you can cast it twice, is probably not very useful. Uh, we've got quite a few payoffs for hitting the opponent between the Shortcut Seeker. We've got two Soul Knife Spies. So those are quite synergistic with our Cridal and Blue Black. Uh, Trickster's Talisman could maybe come in handy with some big flying creatures like the Air Cult Elemental if we can copy it. And then two copies of Contact Other Plane. Those are also quite decent. And uh, Ginny Windseer at four, another good flyer. And then as we mentioned, the Ray of Frost, one of our few removal spells. And you find the Villain's Lair might also make the cuts as a three mana counter. And then of course the Blue Dragon at seven mana, a nice curve topper. So yeah, blue looks okay. Bit of interaction, also some dice roll payoff cards here with the Trickster. And between the two Contact Author Plane and the Ginny, we've got a good number of uh, dice rolling cards as well. If we need the Frost Giant at five mana, just kind of organizing the color by curve. And then the Bartha Gate gives us another three mana counter spell. And something also worth considering in Sealed is sometimes it can be correct if you're playing sideboarded games at least to kind of switch into a different color pair let's say our original deck ends up black green but we face a deck that has some bombs that we just can't beat if the opponent resolves them then we can maybe pivot into kind of a blue deck after sideboard and get access to our two counter spells so don't be afraid to uh, sideboard into a different deck if needed so blue looks decent definitely has enough cards where we could build a deck out of this alongside a second color, especially blue-black might have some good synergies. So it's still possible that we end up somehow splashing some of our bombs like Skeletal Swarming if we get enough treasures to fix our mana, that is. And then uh, let's take a look at black. We've got our two Horde Robbers at two mana. That's potentially a way to fix our mana by making treasure. We've got a Hired Hexblade, probably not super exciting. Uh, the Demogorgon's Clutch is definitely going to make the cut. I believe we had two Clattering Skeletons. Those are quite good with our Skeletal Swarming. Uh, Sphere of Annihilation as kind of a sweeper. Fate's Reversal to get something back from the graveyard. Manticore to maybe finish off a creature that's dealt damage. And then, of course, our Spider Queen and our shiny Baleful Beholder at the top end. So, double Vampire Spawn if we need some three drops. So, outside of Spider Queen and, of course, the Skeletal Swarming and Black Green, Black's not super exciting. We do have a Sphere of Annihilation if we need a Sweeper. So, we'll see if we actually do end up Black, although, of course, that Planeswalker is a very good incentive to do so. In red, we do have a few removal spells. Magic Missile, the Fireball, plus a couple weaponries to deal two damage. Of course, those don't deal with very large threats from the opponent, but also potentially a way to fix our mana. So these are kind of our removal spells. We've got a couple Valor Singers, the Hobgoblin at two, Unexpected Windfall. 
So outside of those burn spells, red doesn't look super exciting. The battle cry goblin without many other goblins to go with it. So it's unlikely that we play red. Unless we're very desperate for some interaction, in which case red offers a couple burn spells. But yeah, unlikely to play red. And then we'll take a look at green, which does have a decent number of playables, so that's promising. Purple Worm, Great Curve Topper, Bullets, can take it or leave it. Uh, Bull Strength, fine to have a trick, and uh, Dryad, a way to ramp. And uh, Troubadour is also quite exciting at 4 mana. The Cir Circle Moon Druid might make the cuts. Ranger at 5 is also fine. Probably not going to play the Plummet, as we mentioned. I don't mind the Lurking Roper, even without a ton of life gain synergy. We've got the Null Hunter, excellent 2-drop. Longbow may or may not make the cuts. Choose your weapons, probably gonna make the cuts if we're gonna need access to a plummet type effect. And since our deck is kinda light on removal, I'm probably fine with main decking one of those. Basilisk. Don't have a ton of death touch, otherwise, I could consider those spare daggers to combo with a death touch creature so we can take out any opposing creature, but. And then the Herd Gorger, another Curve Topper, so... Green is decent. Got a bit of everything, except for removal. Just removal for flying creatures. And then in the equipment section, double Spare Dagger, Golem, Bag of Holding. Bag of Holding and Golem might make the cut. I don't see myself playing the Spare Daggers in this build. And then our Multicolor cards are also potentially a way to give us a bit of direction but uh, mainly interested in the Skeletal Swarming. Alright, so step one, probably what everyone has been waiting for is just seeing how a black-green deck looks like, and then we can maybe identify some problems with it or try different color pairs. Uh, blue, as we mentioned, is pretty deep, so it's possible blue plus black or blue plus green splashing black is an option, and white could also potentially give us access to the Skeletal Swarming if we go green white splash black or green or a black white splash green so that's maybe something worth considering too but we'll start with black green and uh, kind of lay out the curve see how that looks like and that's going to tell us a lot more about our deck so start laying out the deck at six mana we've got the baleful beholder spider queen at five ogre at five might make the cuts couple skeletons at four and then I usually like putting my interaction in a separate pile got a manticore at four although this is the type of four drop that you're pretty rarely gonna cast on turn four couple vampire spawns clutches we'll put in a separate pile since it's also not a card we're casting on turn three all the time the reversal couple horde robbers at two hexblade and finally, the Sphere of Annihilation. We'll add the green cards, Purple Worm. If we're ambitious, we could put it at 5 mana. I'll put it up at the top end for now. Got a Herd Gorger. Ranger. Troubadour at 4. Bullets. Prowler. Roper. Druids. Choose your weapon, goes in the interaction pile. Null Hunter at 2, pretty nice. Basilisk. Got a couple bull strengths, probably not going to play both, so I'll get one out of the way for now. Dryad at 1 mana. And then a longbow as equipment. And then plummet and compelled duel we can probably put aside. Alright, so... And then at 5 mana, of course, our Skeletal Swarming. So, main issues with black-green, kind of light on removal, as we already alluded to. But uh, we've got a curve, so we can easily cut a few cards from this and end up with a balanced deck. So, let's try that. First, maybe count how many cards we have. Assuming 17 lands, we need 23 playables. So we've got one plus 5, 6, plus 5, 11, it's another 5, and 4, so that puts us to 20, 23, so I need to make 6 cuts, 
and uh, can make a few of those pretty easily. Higher attack blade doesn't seem particularly exciting. I don't mind the horde robbers as early blockers that can maybe help us ramp into our bigger stuff since there's plenty of cards to ramp into. Uh, Dried I also don't mind at 3 mana. We don't have a ton of pack tactics payoff cards so the Circle Moon Druid can probably go if I had to cut something else, the Vampire Spawn, although the Vampire Spawn does help us untap the Lurking Roper, which could also come up. Uh, bullets I can maybe cut as well, since at least the Manticore gives us pseudo removal and a skeleton synergize with the Skeletal Swarming. So I could see cutting one skeleton if we need to cut another 4 drop, but I don't mind playing one. But uh, yeah, if we need to add another card, this can easily come back in. Then at 5 mana, happy with the Swarming and of course our Planeswalker. Zombie Ogre, I can take it or leave it. And Ranger, I'm usually happy with since it gives us a Reach creature. And Black Green can be kind of weak to Flyers, so don't mind the Ranger there. And then the Beholder and Third Gorger at 6 and a Purple Worm, which can also sometimes be a 5 drop. So I might end up cutting maybe the Zombie Ogre at 5. Although if we do end up with more Venture Synergies, the Zombie Ogre also gets better. And how many Venture cards do we have? We've got the Clattering Skeletons. We have the Zombie Ogre that can help us Venture. Um, having a look here, there's not too much. The Fate's Reversal also Ventures. But uh, yeah, overall, probably doesn't look like we're gonna complete many dungeons in this deck. So... That also makes cards that venture in the first place maybe a little bit less desirable. Although, the Zombie Ogre, I guess that there's a Troubadour too. Alright, the Troubadour plus Zombie Ogre are two cards that can potentially venture multiple times. So, there's still a realistic chance that we actually complete a dungeon. In that case, I don't mind keeping the Zombie Ogre around. And then, looking at some of our non-creature spells... Uh, Fate's Reversal looks okay, since we do have some pretty big, powerful creatures to get back from the graveyard. Uh, I don't mind the Clutches, Sphere of Annihilation. Seems like a fine reset button, especially if we can ramp into it with a Dryad or the Horde to robbers. And then choose your weapons, fine. Don't think I'm gonna be needing the Ranger's Longbow. We've got a couple Reach creatures, and our curve is kind of high. Whereas the longbow is probably at its best in a lower curve deck, and then we can use this kind of as a mana sink in the late game. And then do I need a bull strength? It's a fine combo trick. Although the way I see our deck winning most of the time is going to be to just land one of our bombs like the Skeletal Swarming or Spider Queen, in which case we don't really need bull strength. Or maybe just by playing one of our big creatures, which I guess could benefit from trample in some scenarios. Um, so... I'm still not entirely decided on bull strength. So we've got five cards so far, so I think I only need to make one more cut. Um, so looking at our curve, happy with the amount of two drops. At three I could potentially still cut a vampire spawn, but again has synergy with a rope or two. And uh, the four drops are all fine. Can maybe cut a 5-drop, considering the Worm again could be a 5-drop as well, so we're a bit high on 5-drops. So, yeah, it's tough. I mean, we have our two bombs at 5, so those aren't getting cut. And both the Ranger and the Zombie Ogre have their place in the deck. And then, uh, I think I'm happy keeping the two 6-drops just as another top-end threat. And again, Sealed also tends to be a little slower, so you've got more time to resolve your 6 mana spells. So, yeah, the last cuts here that I would consider... Maybe the Bull Strength, maybe the Zombie Ogre or Ranger. So we can put those in kind of the maybe pile. Um, I guess if we main deck Choose Your Weapon and maybe... Less inclined to need the Ranger too. And the Spider Tokens also have Reach. Manticore flies. So we do have a few ways to deal with Flyers, although they're still going to be pretty annoying to deal with. And it's not like, a, I guess, a 4-1 Reach is going to trade for many flying creatures. So, yeah, I could see cutting the Ranger then. And then keeping the Bull Strength to have a little bit of instant speed interaction. And keeping the Zombie Ogre as another way to venture turn after turn.
could also decide to play an extra clattering skeletons to combo with our skeletal swarming, which is also totally reasonable. Um, so that's another option we have. All right, so this is what blank green would look like overall. Light on interaction, but the card quality is quite high. I'm pretty happy with most of the cards in this deck, and we do have a game plan, which is play our big 5 and 6 mana spells, which can often take over a game. So I don't hate the look of this blank green deck. We're gonna mentally save this, and then uh, maybe try out some other color pairs and see if something can best this blank green build. Do have access to a few treasures with the horde robbers, but I'm still not really looking to splash any third color in this build, since we have plenty of playables as is. So, sort these by color again, and then uh, can maybe try some other color pairs. Decent chance the blank green build is going to be our final build, but it doesn't hurt to check, especially if there's additional time available. All right, so what color pair do we want to try next? Blue was probably the most promising author color. Also a good idea to always double check your colorless cards. In this case, there's an Iron Golem at 4 mana, which we could play. Although I don't think it's better than any, other, any of the 4 mana cards we had in our black green deck. Uh, we could try blue-black. Still gives us access to Spider Queen and some of the good blue cards, as well as Cridal as a payoff. So I think... Uh, Blue-black is probably the next color pair I want to lay out and kind of assess. So a lot of blue cards. Grab our black again. And uh, probably not going to need any of these. Okay. So let's lay out blue-black. So we've got a nice dragon at 7. Miracle Elemental, Giants, Ginny, Couple Contact, Other Plane, Tricks Red 3. Got the Seeker, Double Spy, Talisman as an equipment, Cridal, of course, Come to a River. Don't think I need UC Guard Approach. And then the Counter Spells. Counter spells are better if we have a lot of author instants, and we do have double contact author plane. So the counter spells could actually be okay in this deck. Uh, so both of them I'll put in here for now. And then I'm not super thrilled by Power of Persuasion, although Power of Persuasion does get better if we have cards like Soul Knife Spy that can maybe get in there repeatedly. So could still consider it. Uh, Ray of Frost might be playable too. I don't think we have enough artifacts for the Black Staff, so that's going to be put on the side and the Hideous Laughter I'm not going to need either. So those are all the blue cards, could almost make a mono blue deck. And then if we add black, we're mainly getting Spider Queen at 5. Uh, the Clutches at 3 is fine. Could play a couple Vampire Spawns at 3. Although those don't seem super necessary. The Horde Robbers are two, I don't mind. Just to fill out the curve a bit. And then could still play a Manticore at four. And maybe an extra Zombie Ogre and Spillful Beholder at the top end. And then Sphere of Annihilation as a sweeper. Don't know if we need Face Reversal in this deck, maybe. So... This is kind of what we're working with in uh, blue-black. So also not a ton of removal, couple bounce effects, and uh, a few flying creatures. So between the blue dragon, air cult elemental, the Ginny Windseer, we do have a few ways to generate flyers, as well as the trickster with a few dice rolling effects. And then we also have Cridal, which can make our creatures unblockable. So this deck has maybe a better game plan for closing out the game with our evasive creatures. So that's something uh, worth considering too. Uh, we could consider splashing, but there's not a lot of ways to make treasure in this deck. Just the two horde robbers. And that's about it. 
So it's going to be difficult to splash a third color since we didn't get Evolving Wilds or the Dragon Land. So again, unlikely that I want to splash a third color, even though the Skeletal Swarming is a bomb. So how many playables do we have here? 6, 9, 12, 15 creatures, and then 21. So I need to make about 3 cuts here. Which shouldn't be too difficult. So, yeah, blue black doesn't look bad. Um, green did have a few pretty nice cards, especially looking at the Troubadour, Lurking Roper, Purple Worm. So it's not like green was bad. And then, of course, Skeletal Swarming, pretty good incentive to go green as well. Uh, but I'm also not hating the look of blue black. So this is what I mentioned in the introduction. If we're playing sideboarded games and let's say we started out with our black green deck but we notice that the opponent has some unbeatable bombs, then uh, getting access to the two counter spells in blue could be a reason to switch. So yeah, we'll put kind of a, a pin in this blue black deck. I'm not gonna spend the time making the last couple cuts in case we run out of time here. Which is not really a concern right now, but sometimes if you're at a pre-release, you only have maybe an hour to build your deck. An hour might be generous, sometimes it's less. So we'll put the blue cards aside and then we maybe still have time to look at a third deck before having to decide where we end up. So I think the last color pair I want to try I don't think blue-green is going to be much better than blue-black or black-green, but uh, we could maybe try white. Since uh, there's maybe a way to splash the Skeletal Swarming, and then um, we have that Moonblast Cleric to get access to it, so we essentially have two copies of it. And white also has a lot of cards that uh, let us venture, and by venturing we can also often make a treasure which can fix our mana. So that's also worth thinking about. Alright, so let's take a look at whites. What pairs best with white? So it's either black or green if we want to play the Skeletal Swarming. I have a couple ways to venture. Cleric at three. Sentry if we need a two drop. Paladin's a good one. Don't think I'm playing the Monk of the Open Hand or Ambushed on the Road. So not a ton of white cards, but if we pair it with black or green we might still have enough. So which color between black and green has the most ways to venture into a dungeon? I guess the Troubadour in green can maybe do it multiple times. And in black we have the Ogre that can maybe do it a few times. So, yeah, it's kind of close between black and green, of course. Black has our Planeswalker, which is a pretty good reason to go black-white. And, um, yeah, maybe that's the only reason we need. So, how would that look like? We've got a couple of vampire spawns at three if we need them. Skeletons also helps us venture, so that's another reason to go black. Beholder at 6. Fates Reversal. Sphere of Annihilation. Clutches. Don't know if we need the Manticore in this deck, but probably. Ogre at 5. Spider Queen at 5. Couple Horde Robbers. And then, as we mentioned, using the venture mechanic, we can make a treasure to splash our... Skeletal Swarming, and then that's also maybe another reason to play the second copy of Clattering Skeletons, as it both helps us venture and synergizes with the Skeletal Swarming. So this is what Black-White Splash Green could look like, and uh, yeah, I don't hate the look of this. We're pretty consistently going to get access to our Skeletal Swarming. And so we have a, a few ways to venture between the Dungeoneers, the Skeletons, 
Planar Ally and Zombie Ogre can do it multiple times. And uh, we have a little bit of creature interaction with the Monk that can tap stuff down. You hear something on watch. And then Sphere of Annihilation as a sweeper. So, yeah, it's close. All three of these builds have their merits. And sideboarding between the different builds could also be the way to go for playing sideboarded games. And I'm not entirely sure which one of these is best, but it does feel like not playing Spider Queen is giving up too much value, so it's probably going to be uh, necessary to include it, but that's why Black has been in all three builds. Yeah, this build is pretty heavy on the four drops, so I could see not playing the Manticore, although it's one of our few interactive spells. And uh, yeah, again, the Skeletons are pretty tempting with the Swarming. We do have double Horde Robbers, so it's possible that we can connect with those and then skip our three drops and go straight into four. So that's also something that can come up, making our three drops less relevant. But yeah, this deck has maybe the least attractive curve. But it doesn't look bad. So, yeah, what does chat think? Would you go black-white, splash-green, blue-black, or black-green? And according to my chat, we've got 14 votes for black-green, and 9 votes for white-black, splash-green, and 5 votes for blue-black. So the majority of people prefer the black-green build, and I can definitely see why. We don't need to rely on mana fixing to splash the skeletal swarming. The curve maybe looks a little bit better. And we get to play some big creatures at the top end. So, yeah, black green might indeed be the way to go. But uh, we don't have to be afraid to potentially sideboard into these other builds. Uh, white maybe leans a bit more aggressive than the other builds too. Which is... Uh, worth pointing out. So we'll put our black green deck back together here. But that's why it's useful to go over all the different builds, just so you have a good understanding of what you're working with, instead of just going with a first gut instinct. Although in this case, our gut instinct of black green wasn't too far off. So we've got our two drops. Triad, Roper. Roper being a good blocker definitely helps out in this deck since we're just trying to extend the game until we can play our big expensive cards. Get the Skeletal Swarming, Clutches, Reversal, Annihilation, Beholder, Spider Queen, Zombie Ogre. I think we landed on one copy of Skeletons in this deck, plus the Manticore. Couple vampire spawns, couple horde robbers. So let's do a quick count to make sure we have 23, 5, 9, 12, 18, plus 5 is 23. So this would be the deck. And we do still have some sideboard options even if we don't want to switch colors altogether. If we're up against a deck with a lot of flying creatures we can always bring in ranger or longbow for extra reach. Uh, Bullet also definitely worth considering, although we don't have a ton of ways to naturally sacrifice our creatures, maybe the Dryad, but that's about it. We've got an extra Clattering Skeletons if we want more synergy with the Skeletal Swarming, although for the most part Skeletal Swarming is fine by itself and doesn't really need additional Skeletons for it to work out. And uh, yeah, again if we're up against the decks with a lot of uh, bombs that we need to counter, we could switch to blue. So, this would be the final build. Quickly going over the mana base. Seems relatively even in terms of black and green. Often want to look at the two drops. If uh, we have a ton of two drops in one particular color, that might be a reason to lean slightly in that direction. Or if we have a lot of double colored cards, we have a couple double black at five, and a couple double green at six, and maybe with a purple worm at 5 too. So it seems pretty balanced. Uh, don't have any dual lands. 
Uh, yeah, could see green, although then again the Dryad does get a second forest and can get a swamp. And we do need double black. So maybe we would give it to swamp here. And then the green cards that are double green end up a little bit later up the curve. So we have more time to draw the second forest. So that probably means 9 swamp, 8 forest. Yeah, I could see switching one vampire for skeletons if we want an extra skeletons to go with the skeletal swarming. Um, since the clutches we can still cast on turn 3 if we really have to. So the curve looks still reasonable like this. And that way maybe we get to make bigger skeletons with the skeletal swarming. But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.